welcome. Come on in. Derek, thanks so much for taking the time to uh, speak with us today. So one of the things I just wanted to ask you is if you could just, you know, kind of tell the audience a bit how Van Brunt Stillhouse came to be. Absolutely. So uh, I used to work in television. I didn't have anything to do with the, um, with the world of spirits. And I was, it was sort of a confluence of wanting to quit my corporate job, uh, but also wanting to do things that uh, I was enjoying doing in my free time. And one of the things I was doing in my free time was making cider and beer, and, and eventually I started making spirits. I had a, the inspiration one New Year's Eve to try my hand at making some eau de vie. And it was, it was a funny aha moment. Not, not that it wasn't right there in front of me the whole time, but it never occurred to me that there was an artisanal side of, of distilling, which had really been lost for 100 years or more. But then there was also a great business opportunity. There was been some changes in the laws in New York that allowed a little bit easier entry for, for businesses to start a distillery. And at that moment in time, there were zero distilleries in New York City, and I really felt like there was a, a confluence of the business opportunity with my, my, with my personal desires. I really take to heart that we're a farm distillery and that we, and despite the fact that we are in Brooklyn, in the heart of the city, I really want to embrace that, that farm culture and I'm a history buff, I love history and, and my family is also Dutch and my, my family came to New York uh, at the same time that Cornelius Van Brunt did and Cornelius Van Brunt was the farmer who settled in this particular area and was, was farming in this part of Brooklyn and so I really wanted to harken back to when this was a farm. Could you tell me about some of the awards that the distillery has been granted? We don't enter a lot of competitions, but we're really proud to have participated in a number of really great spirits competitions. We do the New York International Spirits Competition. We do the American Craft Whiskey Association's uh, awards. We've done ADI in the past, the American Distillers Institute. And the New York State Distillers Guild has recently had its first competition, and uh, we'll be doing our second annual one of those that this year. I think that the American distilling landscape has, has changed in some really remarkable ways in, since we opened in 2011. You know, one of the things is that with more distilleries, there's, there's more attention and more awareness, which I think is really fantastic. My favorite story for, for explaining this is, is rye. Seven years ago, when I started to play around with making rye, I was not a, a rye drinker. I was not the guy who went to the bar and ordered a rye and the rocks. And so, so I didn't really know what I wanted to make for a rye. And I went to the liquor store and I tried to find ryes. And while there were, there were maybe four or seven or ten ryes on the shelf, depending on how big the liquor store was, but when you drilled down, all of those ryes were coming from the same couple distilleries. And when you look at the history, there was, if you go back 150 years, there were a lot of rye whiskeys made in the, in, in the U.S and in New York, and between Prohibition and sort of the Robert Barron era of, of the late 19th century, uh, all of those rye choices had gone away. And, and so I didn't have anything to emulate or I didn't have anything to taste. I could just read what was hypothetically a, a rye recipe. And in the seven years since then, now you can go to the store and there are a lot of ryes on the shelf and um, a lot of great ryes and they, they all taste different and they're all really interesting and that is a really beautiful thing. <laughs>